Well, and while people, as you know, are, are doing their best, trying to make the most of this very difficult moment, George, the president did strike a very somber tone in his latest briefing. Robin, he was as grim as he's been through this entire crisis and quite a striking difference from how he downplayed the severity in those first weeks. Here's what he said last night. Warn the nation to be prepared for a really rough two, even three weeks. And the numbers are simply mind boggling. We could reach more than 200,000 deaths, according to the experts. But Dr. Fauci did say that he hopes with mitigation efforts it won't climb that high. And we do want to say one hopeful note this morning. It comes from Italy. Uh, take a look at this empty waiting room, uh, overflow waiting room at a hospital in Parma, Italy. That room is normally packed with coronavirus patients. Their curve may be starting to go the other way. That is something that's good to see, George. But we begin here in New York City, which has become the global epicenter of this disease. Whit Johnson starts us off near the Naval Hospital ship Comfort, which is here in Manhattan. Good morning, Whit. Michael, good morning to you. The U.S. Navy ship Comfort behind me here will be seeing patients today. It's acting as sort of a relief hospital for the New York City area to treat people who do not have COVID-19. Across the country, more states are enacting tough new restrictions, bracing for worse days ahead. This morning, a somber milestone. Coronavirus killing more people in the U.S. than the terror attacks of 9-11. More than 4,000 falling to COVID-19. The loss of life only expected to climb. The White House Coronavirus Task Force revealing grim models, estimating the virus could kill between 100 and 240,000 people in the U.S. alone. President Trump warning Americans of a painful two to three weeks ahead. The experts are predicting, as I think a lot of us are predicting after having studied it so hard, you're going to start seeing some real light at the end of the tunnel, but this is going to be a very painful, very, very painful two weeks. And now fresh debate among the nation's top doctors about whether CDC recommendations on face masks should be revised to include the general public. It's just being considered by the task force now about whether that recommendation that already exists relevant to wearing masks should be altered in any way. So it's still under discussion. But amid growing shortages, doctors want to make sure medical professionals in hospitals across America have the masks they need first. Those on the front lines are under attack. All the patients in this room, all the feet that you see, they all have COVID. Dr. Colleen Smith, who shared these dramatic images from Elmhurst Hospital in Queens with ABC News and the New York Times, now confirming she's tested positive herself for COVID-19, describing her symptoms as mild. Dr. Smith, among a growing chorus of healthcare workers, sounding the alarm. In New York, Governor Andrew Cuomo still clamoring for medical supplies, including those sought after ventilators. Anyone who says, oh, maybe the, you don't need that many ventilators, you're saying 30,000 ventilators. You don't need that many. You don't really believe you need that many. You know how you know I really, really believe that number? Because we are paying $25,000 per ventilator, and we are broke. And the last thing I want to do is buy a single ventilator that I don't need. The governor revealing his own brother, CNN anchor Chris Cuomo, is now positive for COVID-19. He's an essential worker, member of the press, so uh, he's been out there. He's a really sweet, beautiful guy, and he's my best friend. But while the number of cases continues to soar, signs of hope and recovery. 44-year-old T2 Pomachon, a father of three who has been on a ventilator and was put on that experimental Ebola drug, is now awake and talking. It's just awesome to talk to him and, and hear a voice on the other end of the phone when we call him. It's really special. <laughs> and a hero back to work. 41-year-old Dr. Ross Grant spent three days in the hospital after contracting COVID-19. Tuesday was his first day back on the job as an internist at Cedar sinai in Los Angeles, eager to continue his mission to save lives. I'm feeling, you know, inspired to be back here, actually. I mean, it's nice to see the camaraderie of everybody at the hospital really working their hardest. Nationwide, the Army Corps of Engineers is racing to build as many as 341 field hospitals. Some of those have already been constructed here in New York State, where more than 75,000 people have been infected. Robin.
Yes, Whit, thank you very much. And as you said in your report, one of them is the governor's uh, brother, Chris Cuomo, who was a former colleague of ours here at ABC and part of the GMA family. And like everyone else, we're sending him his best, our best and his family as well. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.